All right, good afternoon, everyone. Excited to introduce you to Samsung Pay and Visa Checkout this morning, this afternoon. Hope you are having a good time at, at the event. Um, Stan Lee is right next to us talking in the next booth, so I'm re it's really hard for us to compete with him. Ap apologies, <laughs> but we'll do our best. <laughs> So my name is Javed Chaudhary. I am part of Samsung Pay team. And here I ha have with me from Visa Checkout team, Dan Macias. We are going to introduce you to Samsung Pay and Visa Checkout joint solution and how you as merchants can really benefit from it. So let's get going. Um, let me give you a little bit of a background. Before I go there, um, can you please raise your hands if you've used Visa Checkout before? Great. How about Samsung Pay? Awesome, so this is the solution for you. You're going to really benefit from it because the experience that you had with Visa Checkout today will get twice more better with Samsung Pay. So if you are using Samsung Pay, you'll get to have new way to shop. And if you are a user of Visa Checkout, you'll get to have better experience on Samsung devices when you're shopping using Visa Checkout. So let's uh, get going. Let me give you a little bit of a background on Samsung Pay first. Then we'll go have Dan cover Visa Checkout details. So Samsung Pay was launched, as you may know, more than a little bit two years ago. And we launched with um, in-store payments. So before we jumped on creating Samsung Pay, we looked into what are the key defining principles that we should build Samsung Pay on. So we looked at, you know, what are the areas that consumers care about? They cared about security, they care about availability of a payment solution, and also they care about ease of use. So we base Samsung Pay features on those three principles. And how did we do that? We actually built Samsung Pay on the security side on top of Knox platform. Knox is our military grade platform that secures your credentials on our devices so in a chipset that is so isolated from Android that no, no application can even access that part of the Samsung data. We built it with additional security features like tokenization that allowed us to avoid the need to store your actual card data and giving that card data to merchants. We prevented that attack that merchants could be under if they had stored that data as a plastic card data. Instead, we used tokens that are one-time use tokens that means user data is never compromised, even when it's in motion through the retail network. And we then focused on how do we protect your device if it's taken by somebody while you have Samsung Pay on it. So we, are, we created user authentication through fingerprint, biometrics. So now you can, somebody can pick up your phone. They cannot use it with payments for payments. We also allow our users to remotely wipe your card data. So in case you lose your phone, you can really wipe your, all your card data and credentials from Samsung Pay, and it's going to be useless for anybody. From simplicity perspective, we really focused on just easy to use. We had a real challenge with plastic today, as it's already very simple. You, you can just take out your card. You can um, swipe it on a MagStripe reader, and that's it. Then why is mobile payments experience can be competing with that? It's already a very simple experience. So what we did was rather than having you actually launch an app, what we did is enable Samsung Pay available even at the lock screen or even at the off screen. So all you do is swipe up, you authenticate with your fingerprint, and tap. The card that you default card that you normally use will be charged. So there is no need to look for Samsung Pay on Samsung device or launch an app. It's just card is all front and center for you whenever you're ready to use it. And then availability or you know, acceptance. That has been a big challenge in mobile payments for years. The bigger challenge for NFC terminals, how can merchants accept card data over a digital interface? NFC was defined created over the years, the adoption of NFC terminals has been extremely slow. So what Samsung did is adopted a technology from a third party, acquired it, and embedded that solution in Samsung devices. We called it MST, Magnetic Secure Transmission. 
So MST allows us, Samsung users, to be able to pay with their devices on any MagStripe terminal that they pay with plastic today. That gave us 95 per plus percentage of acceptance. So pretty much anywhere you pay with plastic today, you can actually use Samsung Pay. With those principles, we wanted to extend the capability of availability beyond in-store payments to online stores. That's part of the partnership that we have today with Visa to enable Samsung Pay availability on online stores where Visa checkout is accepted. So before we went in online, we wanted to understand what are the real problems people are having with online purchase today. It's even higher friction than in-store. You have to fill up many forms. You have to go and sign in in many places. And you have to repeatedly fill that information every time, whether it's your shipping address, your billing address, your card data. And a lot of times, it's even harder on mobile. So that's why you see mobile conversion rates are so low, because people are dropping off when they do e-commerce using mobile devices faster than even desktop. So we had to solve that problem. And that's, in Samsung Pay's case, we have offering three different ways to adopt Samsung Pay's better experience than it is available in the market today. So as a merchant, you can accept Samsung Pay in-app uh, SDK and embed that in, in your own application. And now Samsung Pay users can access and pay using Samsung Pay without having to fill all the forms and all the points of friction have been gone now. Same challenge we had with um, in-store payments. It's pretty much gone with online now. No more form filling required. The other option you have is to adopt W3C, which is a payment request API standard um, defined by the uh, web industry. So all the web browsers today are moving towards adopting W3C payments. What does that mean? That means that all the form merchants today that are working on adopting all of these checkout buttons, whether it's uh, merchant's own button or third-party payments, will, don't, will be not required to do any proprietary implementations. They just adopt W3C and all in existing payment types and future payment types will be supported through W3C, but it's an evolving standard. It will take a few years before it gets widespread adoption because browsers have to open up enable W3C, which is already in works, but then merchants have to upgrade their websites to later on uh, accept W3C. And it's available today. There are some merchants that are already working on it. But the partnership that we have today with Visa Checkout is fundamental benefit that immediately offered to merchants. They can accept Visa Checkout. They can access any of the wallets, including Samsung Pay, and we'll show you the experience. It really comes down to delivering a better experience. So let's do a quick demo. This is a Samsung device with Samsung Pay already installed on it. And you can see, if I go to a merchant, let's just say Walgreens, <clears throat> and once you add any of the products in Walgreens shopping basket, let me go straight to shopping basket. I just added a couple of products. And when you're ready to check out, you have options there. You can, as I mentioned earlier, you can proceed to check out using existing merchants checkout form. You have, if you have a login credentials with that merchant, you can enter that, or you can log in as a guest. And this is what the current experience without Samsung Pay or Visa Checkout. You are filling up these forms. You're providing your address, shipping address, as well as, and this is just the shipping address. You have to provide your payment information. You have to provide your billing information the next step. Instead of that, if you go back and just click on Samsung Pay Visa Checkout co-brand button, that will pop up if you have already signed up with Visa Checkout as part of the Samsung Pay user. So if you have a card in Samsung Pay that is a Visa card and you have agreed to use Visa Checkout with Samsung Pay, you'll see this co-brand button, along with the card art that, you, that belongs to you. So that card that I can see, actually my card on my Samsung Pay phone, 
when I click on that, it actually shows me a payment sheet that only requires me to use my fingerprint to authenticate. And once that authentication, authentication is done, I am completely uh, done with my data entry. All the data that I had from Samsung Pay is added to the merchant site. And you can see I didn't really need to film anything. My address, shipping address, my car data, my billing address, everything is done. All I need to do is submit to order and it's complete. So I've skipped those steps that are listed one and two in Walgreens all together and reached the final uh, approval process. So this is what we're talking about, reducing the friction in the checkout process and making people to have faster, easier, and simpler checkout. Dan will go through it more detail about how that can be possible with our merchant partners and provide that details on the SDK. Dan? Thanks, Javed. Sure. <clears throat> yeah. All right, I'm gonna, get a, I'm gonna get into what Visa Checkout is, what it's about, kind of some of the benefits, and, and ultimately what the integration looks like in a bit. But I do wanna point out um, one of the cool things about what Java just showed in that demo and what I think is the beauty of this partnership that we've come together and, and been able to build is the fact that what was just showed, you guys are some of the first to see this in real life. Like this is not even live yet. This is going live out in, in November. Um, this is a brand new type of experience. But Walgreens implemented Visa Checkout over a year ago and they haven't really touched their integration uh, since then. So what we've really done in this partnership is figure out a way, how do we light up Samsung Pay users and allow them to transact online, on a mobile phone, in a browser, um, and gain that acceptance across any merchant that, uh, wherever uh, that user would see Visa Checkout today online. And that's really the, the beauty of this uh, innovation that we're showing now. <clears throat> that's correct. That's correct. Walgreens uh, did not perform any upgrade. There's no integration that they did we were able to light up Samsung Pay and Visa Checkout without any effort from the merchant. So um, I want to step back and just talk a little bit about uh, Visa Checkout um, a bit, what it's about, when we launched it, um, and then talk about uh, the integration in a bit more details. So as Javed was mentioning, card abandonment is still a big problem in the e-commerce space where it isn't so much in the in-store the in physical uh, use case. You know, nobody. I should say, not that many people are loading up their shopping carts, walking up to the cashier, pulling out their card and saying, you know what, this is too hard, I'm going to leave the store and leave everything in my shopping cart. Like, that doesn't happen, right? It's because paying in-store is so easy already. It's already an extremely easy and frictionless process. I mean, it's so easy that you don't even need the credit card at all, right? You just walk up with your phone and you use Samsung Pay and your fingerprint and you're done. Like, it's very easy. Card abandonment rate is almost non-existent in-store. Online, it's a completely different story. Like paying um, with a credit card, especially on a mobile device, as Javier was mentioning, filling out the form fields, these are all sources of friction. And the sources of friction create uh, cart abandonment. Um, so when we launched Visa Checkout three years ago, we were really trying to solve that problem, specifically on you know, mobile, uh, mobile form factors. And we had four kind of key principles to how we were doing that. And the first is that it had to be fast. So in the experience, we, we had to remove the, the form fields. Like get rid of the form fields. Every extra step, every extra form field that you have on your site creates additional friction that drives down conversion. So we're getting rid of the form fields. Uh, second piece is that it had to be easy to use. And so we've designed Visa Checkout to be in a, a consistent experience that's familiar regardless of what type of device you're on. You could be on a mobile phone, you could be on a tablet, on a desktop. Uh, it doesn't matter what merchant site you're on. It doesn't matter what country or geography you're in. Uh, it's a consistent, familiar experience. Uh, the third principle is that it had to be secure. So we've layered in uh, security features such as device fingerprinting and step-up authentication to make sure that we're fighting and stopping fraudulent behavior before it reach the, reaches the merchant site. And then the fourth piece was that it had to be, it had to be simple for, for merchants and developers to adopt. Uh, it couldn't be a complicated uh, integration, had to be simple, had to be flexible. Uh, and that's really the core principles that were built Visa Checkout from. So then, 
you know, some of the benefits that merchants are seeing from using Visa Checkout. Quick snapshot of where we are today. We have over 25 million uh, users enrolled in Visa Checkout. Uh, we have Visa Checkout acceptance across over 300,000 merchants. Uh, and it's, uh, Visa Checkout is available and live in 26 countries around the world. And some of the benefits that, that merchants are seeing now from using Visa Checkout on their sites is, is uh, threefold. So one is they're just getting more customers, right? So we have 25 million uh, card holders out there that are already preloaded with credentials in a Visa Checkout account. When they go to the site, it's easy for them to use. It's a familiar ex um, experience. And so kind of the fear and so, uh, uncertainty and doubt that might come in when you're checking out on a merchant site for the very first time kind of is, it, uh, goes away when there's a familiarity um, and the trust with using Visa Checkout. Uh, we talked about increasing conversions. So we do see that in our merchants where consumers are checking out at a higher conversion rate when they're using Visa Checkout versus standard, just a standard credit card um, checkout flow. Uh, in addition to that, we're also seeing higher authorization approval rates coming from Visa Checkout, which is benefiting the merchant um, in, in higher, higher revenue that they're seeing on their website. And then the third key benefit is, is lower fraud. Uh, so through those security um, capabilities that I mentioned earlier, uh, we're actually driving fraud rates um, as high as 63% lower than traditional checkout through Visa Checkout. So it is a developer conference. I wanted to make sure we covered a bit on the integration steps and what this means to developers. Um, before I get into it, I want to point out, you know, I encourage you to go out to our developer portal. That's developer.visa.com. When you're there, you can create a sandbox test account, get access to test APIs, view our Visa Checkout integration specs, um, as well as other, other uh, capabilities and, and services that Visa has to offer. But when you look at Visa Checkout and what it takes to integrate, I mentioned it's simple and it's flexible. There's really only three steps to add Visa Checkout to your site and accept payments from Visa Checkout. Uh, the first is adding the Visa Checkout button to your site. This is an image tag. It's a JavaScript SDK, and it's an event handler. It's very simple to add, add the button to any page on your website. Uh, third, or second piece to that is decrypting the payload so that the payment information that comes back from Visa Checkout is in an encrypted form. Um, so there's a simple decryption algorithm that you use along with your API credentials. When you unlock that, you're going to get all the user information, the credit card information, billing address, shipping address, everything you need to transact with that consumer going to come from Visa Checkout. And the third piece is simply, you know, once the order is successful, you're posting a, a, an, an update back to Visa Checkout that the order was uh, successful. And that's it. It's just three easy steps. A lot of uh, our developers can get through it in as, as little as a couple days just to integrate and test. Um, and again, I, I encourage you to, uh, to go out to our developer portal and, and try it for yourself. All right. I think, yeah, I think we have a few minutes for... For Q&A? Yeah, we have a couple of minutes for Q&A. Cool. Uh, yeah, so we're going to open up for Q&A. Anybody have uh, questions? Nothing want to ask? Yeah, we're literally, it's going to be a, a switch we turn on in every merchant in the U.S. that has Visa yeah. Checkout. Samsung Pay will be available to, to Samsung Pay yeah. users. We got a, we got it a should question be two to three weeks we'll launch, so you'll see that. What, uh, what cards do you see um, when, you, when you check out? Do you see the Samsung Pay cards or do you see the Visa Checkout cards? You'll see the Samsung Pay cards, Samsung Pay cards in Samsung Pay, but Visa cards in Samsung Pay. So currently, it will be supporting only Visa cards in Samsung Pay. Anybody else have a question? Yes. Uh, so if you have a Mastercard card in Samsung Pay, it will not be offered as a payment option in Visa Checkout today. Great. Cool. Uh, so with that, we're going to end our session and uh, round of applause for our speakers. Thank you so much, Dan and Javed.